Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I'm making a new art journal page. And I'm going to show you all the steps from soup to nuts, background to finished, everything. Unlike my altered books, which I sell and use authentic antique papers in, in my art journal, I use papers from my scrap box. And inside the scrap box are old postcards, old catalogs, advertising, junk mail, uh, let's see, old magazines that I get for a quarter at a thrift store or uh, old coffee table books that I get cheap at yard sales. If you would like more information on how to make your own scrap box, I have a video just on that and the link is below this. So you can check that out after and find cheap, fun, easy ways to make a scrap box full of images to work with. You can also find a link to a video that shows where I make the background, which is the background of all of my art journal pages, because you can see underneath the text just kind of peeks through. And I've linked to the page where I show this. So yesterday, I spent about 20 minutes, half an hour, going through the thousands of pieces in my scrap box. And I'm going to try to talk a little bit about why I ended up choosing these. It's a little hard to explain because it's, I really am going by instinct here. And that's not like me. I am the sort of person who plans everything. I have a list for my lists. So I like, one of the things I like about my art journal is it's where I try to be more spontaneous and trust my instincts and remind myself over and over that even if you think you've made a mistake, you can always turn it into something uh, beautiful and worthwhile. That's a pep talk, by the way. You should try that. Okay, so let's look at these and I'll talk about some of the ideas that I'm considering. This is clearly a box that came with some tea bags inside. And I really, you know, I just, just knew that I wanted to use these beautiful celestial plummy fuchsia colored images. So I'm going to, not even sure how I'm going to cut them yet, but I will make several little scraps of it and then I can use it throughout the page to pull it together. I might combine that because I'm going to be taking that out. This is a page that I printed up for a project and um, I ran out of ink while I was printing. So instead of coming out a uh, butterfly color, it came out short of one of the toner color colors. But it's a happy accident and I don't throw paper away. That's wasteful. So look, it's got blue on the wings, rims, and I've got a little bit of blue here as well. So I think that's going to go nicely. And again, I can tear this up and use it in different fragments throughout. That does not mean that I will not be using something altogether different because I'm really leaning into yellow these days. Come on spring. Also, you probably know that yellow and purple complement each other in the color world. So that's going to go somewhere. I really like this, this, this bird, this little nut hatch guy, but I'm not sure. We'll, we'll have to see as I get going. Here are some more bees, but that's actually a lot of look and I might not use it in this page, but save it for another. Here's a scrap of a page of wildflowers. And it's also got that purple color. And I'm probably gonna do something like that to break the page up and make it interesting. And if you think that you would like to play around with some wildflowers like this, cause they're super versatile, I have downloads of several of them on my website. They're free, they're high res, the link is below, go over and get them. I may go with this, this fragment. It, the, it's 
almost purple. It's between a gray and a purple, but it's also got the yellow. So that would really pull together the purple here and the, the bee flower thing, maybe. And I, if I do end up having a face in this piece, I'm very, very fond of this Madonna with the ermine. And I like the way that she's looking into the other page or off of this one to something we can't see. But I also found, after I chose that, I found this, I just printed it myself um, from one of my French postcards of these children in Pierrot and Pierrette costumes. And I kind of think that goes better with the, the moon and stuff. So we'll see which one of those I end up using or neither. These are some bees I printed up for a project and put on some cards. So I might rough tear some of those off and put them up in a corner or under something. Can't go wrong with a few bird's eggs for embellishing stuff. Oh, and um, I'm not sure I'm going to use this, but it's it was another bloom from a, you know, from a, like a gardening magazine, but it had a very, it has a soft kind of abstract feel to it that would look beautiful in either of the corners here and then would also pick up the yellow of the bee, wherever he's going to be, as it were. I have narrowed down the elements that I'm going to work with today, and I want to talk about the the process of laying out the collage. So I took the the box of tea and I cut the words out and made a little window. And then I tore off a little bit of the butterfly print, and that's what's going to be showing in the window there. And we're going to anchor this side with that. Then I uh, had this left over, so I rough tore it, and I'm going to bring it all the way over here. And again, it's going to echo in color and theme. Let's see, that means I also have this strip from the wildflower print, and I'm going to put it here as well. Or maybe there, to cover up a cover up a few of the seams there. It makes it look a little bit more like a frame. Or not. Let's see, I did decide to go with the nut hatch, and he's going to go over here. Then there is the lady with the ermine, not the children. And that's because I just thought she's looking bemusedly at this celestial scene which means probably I should anchor it in this corner up here to raise it to make her eye gaze a little more interesting. Just a little bit more of a slant, and I'll probably color this in with some, some purple to bring that line down. Then I thought I would add the bee over here for this bird to stare at or maybe eat. Uh, but, and also to suggest a sun. Then I thought, wait a minute. This would make an excellent halo for her. And it would break up some of the purple. That's, I love, but it's getting a little relentless there. So that's going to be her halo. Which means the bird needs something else to look at. And I cut out the tea box that had a leather little baby moon here. And that's going to be what he's looking at now. So instead, I'm going to take this other vertical line, because we now have vertical line, 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 and I still want to keep that. I'm just going to layer her over it a little bit. And add her halo like so and I'm not sure I'm probably gonna add some embellishment or maybe a little place for uh, writing a quote here 
I am going to go glue it down and be back in a mo. Everything is in place and I have gone round all of the borders and all of the edges of the images with a water soluble uh, graphite pencil. It's similar to a watercolor pencil, except it's, it's graphite. This one's Karen Dash, but a lot of people make it. I'm going to activate this, not with water though, but with gesso. And, uh, I know a lot of you have seen me do this technique, but I just love it so much. It does a lot of things. It activates, as I said, the, the gray. And it also really makes your images start to blend into the page and it creates a really painterly technique there where you can hardly tell where one starts and the other finishes. Also, as you pull the white and the gray into your page, which you definitely want to do, you're making this more canvas like which will be nice when we start to embellish the page with color otherwise known as the really fun part so i tell you what i'm going to take a break here and do the rest in double time And now it's time to embellish the page. The gesso is dry and I'm going to go throughout and add decorations, picking up the two main colors, which are going to be a, a violet plum purple and the yellow. I am probably going to do more mark making with the purple colors as I just have a lot more purple art supplies. So before I do that, I want to add more yellow to the background. Also, I think this could actually use more coverage and layer. You could use any number of water solubles here, like with the pencils, but I thought I would show you how it looks if you use the Humble Chalk Pastel. It's just a soft pastel. They are, you probably have some, if not, they're very affordable and surprisingly versatile. They are also, perhaps surprisingly, water soluble. So again, I'm going to use the gesso to activate the color and just play around and pull it into the layers of the text and the page. I'm not thinking about this. I just want to work it into the layout and get that peeling wallpaper, peeling fresco look that I love in my pages. So just pulling it in here and going throughout. Let's see. Here we want a little bit, it's a little bit too yellow. Even working into this guy a little bit. Yep, that's getting there.
and while okay yeah while this is drying while this is drying I'm going to add some coffee rings except they're not really coffee I'm going to use this little Japanese teacup and for the color here I'm going to use some gesso that I have mixed with a little bit of uh, ink it's a cassis color and I'm just gonna ink up my teacup here and add some circles I also like this uh, with the gesso the ink gets a little bit uh, paler which is good because it's gonna mimic this violet color rather than the heavy heavy plum which is adding a lot of gravity over here already There. Okay, now next I want to take my, this is a water-soluble crayon, but today I'm just using it for color. And I'm going to add some stars. See how it has stars over here in the, the box? So I'm just going to add, these are in a very naive style, so I'm not going to try to make them look too symmetrical. The guy making the box didn't. Let's see, let's add some over here. Okay, so... Now I am going to go big and add a layer of drizzle across the top. So what I've done is I've put some of the cassis ink in this mini spritzer. I'm going to add a layer, a little stream all across the top. You want to have plenty of Paper towels, kitchen towels at the ready. Trust me, you do. And make sure there's nothing valuable on your table because this stuff makes a lot of itself. I also have another sp uh, spritzer mister with just plain water. Let's see, so let's. Go along the top here. And now I'm going to make it really really messy with my water and I'm going to tilt my page so that I do not get my bird too purple see you need paper towels I'm going to do that over here Again, taking care that I don't. Yeah, I have to do something about that because I don't want her to be too. Uh... I do like it over here, though, where it's going down the the moon in the little window. I know this technique makes a few people anxious because it's it makes a lot of itself, as I said. 
but you can also see that you can always dab in and out, you know, make it a little bit lighter. And fix what needs fixing. Finally, I'm going to add a little bit more mess by using this ink and um, an old toothbrush. And I'm going to hope like heck it works. Because what I'm going to do is make a few, just a few planets here. Okay, this is a little bit of a galaxy and now we have some planets in the background to go with the stars. Yeah, yeah, I am pretty happy with this. Okay, I'm very happy with this. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel. If you would like to learn more about art journaling and altered books, and if you would like some free vintage paper downloads and other paper goodies in your inbox at the first of the month, I have an online newsletter and you can subscribe to that in the link below this video. Please let me know if you have any questions or feedback in the comments. I really love to hear from you. And until next Friday, happy making.